So one of the things that we're doing is we've, we've recently acquired uh, something called Deco. Deco is a unique uh, method for using HTTP TLS on which the entire internet securely operates now. It's a unique method for using HTTP HTTPS slash TLS to transmit data to various web systems, blockchain systems, and enterprise systems. We're also creating a full research program over, over many years now, we've been working with an exceptionally talented uh, research team. And due to our recent success, we're very lucky to have the resources and everything we need to expand our research team even further. We've also not been super public about our research and we haven't always extended as much um, clarity about all the ongoing research we're doing, but we're go going to be changing that and making a full research program where we have a large research team that's gonna continue to grow that's going to be uh, very well funded and that we're going to have various research grants for and and that that's going to be that's going to continue to be composed of the best uh, researchers in the security research cryptography and computer science disciplines and in service of that goal we're very very um, grateful and thrilled to be working with Ari Ari Jules who is joining Chainlink Labs as its chief scientist Ari is really one of the people that's had uh, a very large impact on me over the years and that we've, we were very lucky to have written the initial Chainlink white paper with. Uh, me and Steve were, were very, very lucky to, to have put that together with Ari and, and have had the pleasure of working with him for many years on making Chainlink better and better. Now he uh, is luckily working with us in, in a more kind of involved capacity as the chief scientist who is running the research program. Hello, I'm Ari Jules. I'm delighted to be with you here today at SmartCon in my new role as chief scientist of Chainlink. In fact, I'm doubly delighted because as was announced earlier today, I'm gonna to talk about DECO, a technology developed in my separate role at Cornell Tech and IC3 that Chainlink has just acquired. And DECO is one of the first things that we are finalizing the research and productization of through the research program in addition to a number of other things such as Mixicals, Town Crier, and um, many other innovative methods that we would, uh, that we'll be looking forward to releasing soon. To jump into Deco, once HTTPS and TLS appeared, you were able to send credit card numbers, and amazingly enough, that gave rise to e-commerce, right? So now that I can send payment information, I can have e-commerce. So the consistent history of what happens when you make data more secure and more private, but still allow people to use it, is that people then compose that data into massive new industries, massive new use cases like e-commerce. The ability for us to now put the highest quality, highest frequency and unique data sets to generate even more unique high quality data products is being made more possible. And this I think will actually enable DeFi products on scalable chains in environments where higher frequency premium, various premium data can, can function well. It'll enable them to go to feature parity and beyond with the financial industry's current systems because those systems can consume premium private unique market data. And I feel myself that DECO is a similar innovation. What DECO aims to do is liberate this data. DECO is an innovation that allows all the world's data, just like HTTPS allowed all the world's credit cards to be used on the internet. DECO allows all the world's data that's in HTTPS TLS format, which is the, the, pretty much almost all secure data, to be utilized by blockchain systems there's lots of unusable private data sitting in web servers. Things like bank account balances, identity documents like driver's licenses, and private enterprise data or private APIs. So I think one of the th things Deco will do is basically make accessible all the premium private and unique market data that previously might not have gone onto a public blockchain or even a consortium chain. The requirements against which we're building need to enable people to meet their requirements. Right? It's not about my requirements, it's about our users' requirements. And the categories of users are, once again, from that crossing the chasm graph, you have the DeFi users, you have the Web 2.0 and early adopter FinTech and SureTechs, and then you have the enterprises. And, and once again, I, I think this is the, the, the meaningful way to, to think about this. How do we, as an industry, want to cross this chasm? And we, as um, a project that Chainlink need to do, is we really need to be ready to service all of these stages of adoption. One of the large questions for the enterprises is, is how do I deal with blockchains generally? Because enterprises don't wanna choose a blockchain winner. They don't care about choosing a blockchain winner. All they care about is conducting transactions in their specific vertical industry. 
in the environment that other people want to conduct transactions in. And therefore, what, what you actually need is you need a, a single kind of abstraction layer that can fit into their existing architecture and allow them to interact with all these blockchains. And that's where all the time and, and energy and money that we're investing in properly integrating natively with these many different chains that is going to create the interface through which various enterprise systems can then interact with those chains efficiently, which really just benefits everybody. It benefits the enterprises because they can efficiently interact with the blockchain sphere. It benefits the platforms they interact with because those platforms now get access to all of their data and all of their kind of resources and all of the value that they could put on chain. And it, uh, it obviously benefits Chainlink because it, it leads it to become more of a standard, a global standard for how the enterprise landscape interacts with blockchains through an abstraction layer. And so I think this is one thing that's also not fully understood, but you, you will need a blockchain abstraction layer for enterprises to make a, a single kind of purchasing decision about how they interact with blockchain.